Hello, hello, hello. Today is September 3, 2021. Solutions to the hummingbird feeder problem. It's a very interesting problem. And as I did the solutions myself, it became even more interesting to me. So the idea is, if you fill the bird feeder with liquid, with sugar, but you don't allow any birds to drink, why is it that still then, given enough time, the water level goes down? That's the problem. All right. First of all, some of my viewers pointed out to me that the liquid in some of the parts of my videos were clouded. And they said, you really have to clean your bird feeder very well between fillings. And I looked up online and they make that point too. They say the reason why it becomes cloudy is the result of bacteria. These bacteria thrive on sugared water and the bacteria even come out of the beak of the hummingbirds themselves. And so I have been cleaning it much more thoroughly than I did in the past. My last filling was a week ago and as of today the liquid is still crystal clear. So I advise all of you to do the same because online men mentions that it could even be bad for the health of the birds if you don't do that. Okay, here is my bird feeder. Liquid all the way here, here are the two flowers, very small openings here, and there is a little air volume upstairs. I call that V1. I cannot V1 as small as I would like to, I will get back to that later, because the way I fill them, and you can go back to the way I fill them, always leads to the fact that up here there is at least a few cubic centimeters of air. So there is that air. Keep in mind the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. P in Pascal in SI units, V in cubic meters, N in moles. One mole is 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules. R, which in SI units is 8.314, and T the temperature in Kelvin. Now, during the day, the temperature here can easily become 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the summer, like now. It can even get higher than that. 100 degrees Fahrenheit is about 37 degrees centigrade, that is 310 degrees Kelvin. At night, the temperature could easily be 60 Fahrenheit, which would be 22 degrees centigrade, which would be 295 degrees Kelvin. Let's first look here. The pressure outside these flowers is one atmosphere, by definition. I call that one atmosphere. It's about 10 to the 5 Pascal. And you should know that during the day, as a result of temperature fluctuations of the air outside, that pressure never changes more than about 0.3 degrees, so it's negligible. I ignore that. So, when the temperature goes up by 5%, this temperature goes up from 295 to 310, 5% increase, P has to stay constant. The pressure here must always be one atmosphere minus the hydrostatic pressure due to the height h of water. Let's assume that h in the beginning is 10 centimeters. That would be an equivalent of one hundredth of an atmosphere. You should be able to calculate that. Remember 10 meters of water is one atmosphere. 
10 centimeters is therefore one hundredth of an atmosphere. So the pressure here must be and must remain 0.99 atmospheres. I use atmosphere as my unit of pressure. It must remain that. Otherwise it would violate the idea that the pressure here is one atmosphere minus the height of the water. So therefore, when the temperature increases by 5%, the only thing that can happen is that V increases by 5%. So, by the time that the temperature has indeed reached the 310 degrees, my volume has increased by 5%, and that means my new volume is 5.25 cubic centimeters. So that means that 0.25 cubic centimeters of water has been pushed out. That air expands and it pushes out water. So, this is easy. Many of you have this. This is the easy part. Way more interesting is the second part, which almost no one has correct. So now at night, in my simple example whereby the temperature changes from 60 slowly to 100, going slowly back to 60, going back to 100. Just a simple model. But you can change that in any way you want to. So at night, then in my model, it goes back to 295 Kelvin. Now, that means that the pressure here wants to go down. But you cannot compress the air because there is no water to go up. None of this water can go up. So V can never go down to compensate for the fact that the temperature goes down by 5%. So the only way that can happen is that if V cannot go down, then P must go down. But that's not allowed because the pressure here must remain 0.99 atmospheres. And now comes the beauty. The way that nature solves that is, nature says, okay, temperature goes down by 5%. I put more air in this volume here. I put 5% more in. So the number of moles, so the number of air molecules goes up by 5%, and P times V can remain constant. V doesn't change. And P remains 0.99 atmospheres. This is key. What does that mean? That air will go up? It means that air will bubble up and end up here. Go, goes in here and end up there. So as this happened, and I will show you that I have watched it myself, because it can also happen during the day that the temperature goes down, then you will see air going upwards. To always keep the temperature, uh, the pressure at 0.99 atmospheres, assuming that H is of course 10 centimeters. In time, of course, H will go lower and lower and lower. That's a separate issue, not so important now. So now, the next day, the temperature goes back up to 100 Fahrenheit to 300 degrees Kelvin. So my new volume is now 5.25 cubic centimeters. And there is more air in there than there was before, because 5% more air, more air molecules. So it goes up by 5%. So the 5.25 cubic centimeters now becomes 5.51 cubic centimeters. Because this volume now increases by 
and so 0.26 cubic centimeters of water is now pushed out. So here 0.25 cubic centimeters and now 0.26 cubic centimeters. And so this process keeps going and you will see in time indeed the water level go down. So the bottom line is, oh by the way, in case you made V1 0.1 cubic centimeters, which I cannot do because of the way that the system is designed. But if I could do that, then of course a 5% change in V1 would only bring the pressure uh, V2, the, the volume V2 at 0.105 cubic centimeters. So it would only push out 0.005 cubic centimeters of water, almost nothing. So it would go down extremely slowly. But I cannot start with 0.1 cubic centimeters. Okay. So, what is now the beautiful part of this? When the temperature goes up, probably due to the sun, water is pushed out. When the temperature goes down, air goes to the top, to that volume, it bubbles up. I have seen that many times. First of all, of course, I have seen many times, I should, I should mention that, that when the temperature goes up, during the day when I watch the, the feeder, I have many times seen water coming out of the flowers. That's exactly what you expect. The temperature goes up, and as the temperature goes up, water comes out of the flowers. Very clear. I've seen, it's easy for me, I can see that almost every day, provided that the sun comes out and that the volume at the top heats up a lot. So I've seen this many times. Now, at night, or during the day when the temperature goes down, I must see air bubbling up, and I've seen that too. Of course, it's more difficult for me to see it, because most of this bubbling up of air happens during the night, when it gets cold. It's rare that there is a situation that during the day the temperature goes down while I'm sitting there, then of course, yes, I would see, and I have seen it, then I see air bubbles is going up. Now, of course, I mentioned that already, uh, when H decreases, of course, P would go higher than 0.99. If, uh, if you reach the point that H is only 5 centimeters, then, of course, the pressure at the top is 0.995 atmospheres. That's easy for you to see. So, the, percent, the percentage expansion and contraction of the water itself is so, so much smaller than that of air that I have ignored that. I mentioned already earlier that the pressure on the outside, even during enormous changes in air temperature, that the pressure outside the flowers always remains within 0.3% the same one atmosphere. Now, I'm testing now you whether you have completely digested my solution. So I'm asking you a question. So during the day, the temperature, if, if during the day the temperature goes down, then I see air bubbles going up, and I've seen that. And I gave you the reasons for that. The pressure must be kept at 0.99, even though the pressure wants to go down, but that's not allowed. And so the only way that nature can do that is put in more air, more molecules. Now comes my question. I sit there and I watch when birds are drinking, they go like this, in, out, in, out, in, out. You may have seen that. That can last 10 seconds, but it can even last much longer. 
And now my question to you is, what will I see when that happens, if they drink a lot, and why? If they drink a lot, do you think that the water then will go down? That's a violation, right? Because the pressure up there must remain at 0.99 atmosphere. So what will I see when they drink a lot? And trust me, I've seen that many times. I love this problem. And the reason why I love it, that I only got a complete understanding of it when I did the solutions. There's this whole concept that water is only pushed out when the temperature goes up and that air comes in from the sides if the temperature goes down. Lovely, isn't it? Very few of you have this right. Don't feel bad about it. It requires a pretty good understanding of physics, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Many of you have that, but I didn't realize that this problem is more tricky than I originally thought. So I'm going to post it right away because it's way overdue. It's September 3. Have a nice day and take care. And whether you can do this right or whether you cannot, you'll always be my friends. That's a given.